Hello viewers who are there now taking you through the story of A Level Physics Paper 1 and this video I'm going to go through the topic of thermometry and this topic is under heat and heat properties and it's suitable for students in both senior 5 and senior 6 offering physics as part of their combination. So before we start let's first look at the course outline for this paper. So physics paper 1 is divided into three parts. The first part is mechanics, where four questions come from these topics. The second part is heat, where three questions come from these topics. And the third part is modern physics, where three questions come from these topics. And a student is expected to answer five, but picking more than, not more than two from each section. So if you pick two from here, two from here, you, are, you should choose one from here. Or if you choose two from here, two from here, then you should pick one from here. Or if you choose two from here, two from here, then you should pick one from there. So any is okay. So in the, on this platform, you're interested in the calculations, but full notes are found in this book, Master on A-Level Physics Paper 1. It contains clear notes worked examples and trial questions on all the parts mechanics heat and modern physics so the questions for me which will which you look at in this on this platform will be the worked examples found in this book so if you have a book then you are at a better advantage to so get a copy you can contact the author on any of these two contacts and a complete set of physics has three books. There is Physics Paper 1, Physics Paper 2, and Physics Topical Question Bank. If you do math, the complete paper of Principal Math, there has three books, Math Paper 1, Math Paper 2, and the Topical Question Bank. For subsidiary math, it is only one book, and the rest are for all level, all level Topical Question Bank, all level Notes, and all level Math Topical Question Bank. So for any of the copies, contact the author on any of these two contacts. So yes, that's our topic of thermometry. So there are some terms we need to know. So thermometer, a thermometer is an instrument which is used for measuring temperature on the basis of a certain physical properties. So we have, we have a term here, physical properties, which change with changing temperature. So we have this word, physical properties. So these properties are what we call thermometric properties. So that takes us to the terms which you shall look at in this video which are not taught in all level so one is a thermometric property a thermometric property is a physical property think remember that word here physical property of a substance whose value varies linearly you know this word linearly and continuously with temperature so those two words must be seen, the word linear and the word continuous. If you don't want to use the word linear, you can use the word uniform. So both words have to be seen linearly and continuously with temperature. That is what we call a thermometric property. What about a thermometric substance? So this is a substance which has a property of changing with change in temperature and is constant at constant temperatures. So both words have to be seen. It changes with change in temperature and is constant at constant temperatures. The third definition is the third term is what we call temperature scale. So a temperature scale is one which can be used to measure the degree of hotness or coldness of a body. 
And what you should notice is that the temperature scale is defined by two fixed points. We have what we call the upper fixed point and also what we call the lower fixed point. So that takes us to a definition to the term of fixed point. What is a fixed point? So this is a single temperature. Now this word single temperature at which it is expected that a particular event takes place. So a single temperature where a particular event is expected to take place. So we have two temperature scales. There is the up Celsius scale and also the Kelvin scale. So for a Celsius scale, ice point is zero degrees Celsius. And that is the lower fixed point. And steam point is 100 degrees Celsius. And that is the upper fixed point. Remember we said a fixed point is defined by, sorry, a temperature scale is defined by two fixed points. We have the upper and the lower. So for a Celsius scale, the lower fixed point is 0 degrees Celsius. And we call it ice point. While the upper fixed point is the steam point and is 100 degrees Celsius. And we call that's what we call the upper fixed point what about for a kelvin scale so you can call it a kelvin scale or thermodynamic scale or absolute scale so the absolute zero for a kelvin scale we have what we call the absolute zero that is zero kelvin and if you convert it to degree celsius it is negative 273 degrees celsius and that will be the lower fixed point while the triple point of water is 273.16 not here that we add a point it is 0.16 for this one when you're converting you don't put a 0.16 but here the triple point of water is 273.16 so remember that or you can call it 0 0.16 degrees celsius and that is the upper fixed point So we saw what we called a triple point of water. So what is this word, triple point of water? So triple point of water is the unique temperature where all the three states of matter coexist in equilibrium. So the three states of matter, we have pure water, pure melting ice, and pure saturated vapor so they all coexist in equilibrium that is when triple point is said to occur so now we need to know how to get the how to establish a temperature scale so what we need to get to know is the fixed points then we also need thermometric property then we need the value of the thermometric property at fixed point that is if it is Celsius, it will be at 0 degrees Celsius and at 100 degrees Celsius. If it is Kelvin, it will be at triple point of water, at triple point of water and at the unknown temperature. Then the fundamental interval between the fixed point. So all these are needed. But that is more of theory for us who are interested in the calculation part of it. So what we shall do, we shall derive a formula for Celsius scale and also a formula for the Kelvin scale and we shall start our calculations. So let's start with the Celsius scale. For the Celsius scale, one thermometric property is selected. Let's call it X. By now I believe you know what a thermometric property is. So a thermometric property is selected. Then the value of the thermometric property X100 at steam point is obtained. Like we said, uh, under the requirements, we need fixed points. So we need ice point and steam point. So now we have got the upper fixed point. What about the lower fixed point? So the lower fixed point, or what we call the ice point, is also obtained. And shall call it X0. To mean the thermometric property, value of thermometric property at 0 degrees Celsius. Then also we need the value of the thermometric property at the unknown temperature. 
So the unknown temperature is theta, the one you want to measure. So you have to get the value of the thermometric property at that temperature. So you shall call it x theta. Then from there, we shall draw a graph of the thermometric property reading against temperature. And that will be a straight line graph. So let's first draw the graph. So we have three temperatures. We have 0 degrees Celsius, theta degrees Celsius, and 100 degrees Celsius. We also have the corresponding values of thermometric properties, that is zero, x0, zero, x theta, and x100. So we need this point, and also need the point at unknown temperature, and we also need the point at 100 degrees Celsius. Then when you know those points, what we are going to do is shall draw a straight line through those points. Remember this, they told us it is a straight line graph. So let's draw that straight line. Okay. Now this is the line we shall use to derive the formula which we shall be using. So what you need to know is to that a straight line has the same gradient. So we shall complete a triangle, this triangle, and also complete this triangle. So now I have two triangles which are similar. So for a straight line, the unknown temperature theta can be obtained as follows. So gradient of line AB is equal to gradient of line AC. So for line AB, we have this over this, which is here. And for line AC, we have this over this, which is here. Then we shall substitute. For BD, from here up to here, it will be x theta minus x naught, which is this. Then for AD, from here up to here, it is theta minus 0 degrees Celsius, which is here. Okay. For S, for CE, it is x 100 minus x naught, which is here. And for AE, it is 100 minus 0, which is here. So what are substituting for BD, for AD, for CE, and for AE? Next is to look for a way of making theta this subject. So when you cross multiply, this 100 minus 0 gives 100. That's why you write on 100 here. Theta minus 0 gives theta, that's why you write theta only here. So this theta goes this side to multiply with this to give you this, and this 100 goes this side to multiply with this to give you this side. But our aim is to make theta this subject, so you have to take this one this side. When you do that and rearrange, we shall come up with this as the numerator, this as the denominator, and everything multiplied by this 100. Remember, it is a Celsius scale, so you have to put the unit, and that will be degrees Celsius. So this is the formula we shall be using for, to get a Celsius temperature. What about a thermodynamic scale? So there still we need a to select a thermometric property we shall see the various examples of a thermometric property. But after selecting, you need the value at triple point of water, XTR. And you also need the value at the unknown temperature, that is XT. So this T is the temperature in Kelvin scale. So the unknown temperature capital T can be obtained using the formula that T is equal to XT over XTR times two point sorry two seventy three point one six. So some students forget to put this point one six, but it is very vital. So those are the two scales: the Celsius scale and the thermodynamic scale. And those are the two formulas we need for you to answer the questions in this topic. So like I said, we shall now first list the examples of thermometric property. Remember, previously we have been saying 
select a parametric property x but we didn't specify but in the question they will always specify the thermometric property to use depending on the thermometer they have given in the question so one of the thermometric property is what we call length of a liquid column or thread in the stem of a thermometer so this property is applied when it is a liquid in gas in glass thermometer so when they tell you that it's a liquid in glass thermometer then you always remember that the thermometric property to use is liquid in sorry length of a liquid column and an example of such a thermometer is what we call a mercury in glass thermometer so in that case the formulas become this so where there was x we put the letter for the thermometric property so this is length that's why we put l where there was x now we put l where there was x we put l that is the only difference which changes but the formula has to remain the same another property is what we call pressure over fixed mass over gas at constant volume and this is applied in constant volume gas thermometer so here the thermometric property is pressure therefore where there was x we now put p to denote pressure uh, that's the only change we make the other thermometric property is volume of a fixed mass of a gas at constant pressure so there this is applied in constant pressure gas thermometers and that means that where there was x we put now v to denote volume where there was x we put v but the formulas remain the same then next we have electrical resistance of a platinum wire so this is used in resistance thermometers such as platinum resistance thermometer so in this case where there was x we shall put r to denote resistance so that is the only difference we make but the formulas remain the same the formula for solution scale and the formula for thermodynamic scale then another thermometric property is what we call EMF across two junctions of a wire and this is under thermoelectric thermometers such as a thermocouple so here where there was X we put capital E to denote EMF capital E to denote EMF so the questions will always specify the thermometric property to use the thermometric property can be resistance, can be volume, can be EMF, can be pressure, can be length. So let's look at thermo, some of the calculations in this video, you know, in this topic. We shall start with the calculations for liquid in gas thermometer, liquid in glass thermometer. Here, question says the mature length is so is 5 centimeters at ice point and 20 centimeters at steam point what is the temperature if the length mature length is 8 centimeters so here we shall first interpret the question we have l naught which is the length at 0 degrees celsius then l 100 which is the length at 100 degrees celsius and l theta which is the length at unknown temperature so after interpreting, we shall come and quote the formula and then substitute. So this is the formula, then you substitute for L theta, L naught, L 100, L naught. And this 100 is maintained. The next shall use the calculator to simplify the whole of this to give you 20 degrees Celsius. And that is the temperature they wanted. So that's how they use the formula for Solution scale to get the unknown temperature for a liquid in glass thermometer. What about the resistance thermometer? So yeah, the question came from your neb. 2011 paper 1 question 5D and it says the resistance thermometer has a resistance of this at ice point, this at steam point, and this at unknown temperature theta. Calculate theta on the scale of this thermometer. 
So still we shall do the same, interpret the question. This is the R0, the resistance at 0 degrees Celsius. R100, resistance at 100 degrees Celsius. R theta, the resistance at unknown temperature. Then we shall quote the formula, substitute and the answer. So this is the formula, substitute for R theta, substitute for R0, R100, R0, and maintain this 100. Then use the calculator to simplify the whole of this to give you this and that will be the temperature they wanted. Then question 2 came from your neighbor, 2014, paper 1, question 7e, Roman 2, and says, A platinum resistance thermometer has a resistance of this at triple point of water. Calculate its resistance at 50 degrees Celsius. Now remember they have given us triple point of water, meaning they want the temperature on a thermodynamic scale. That means we have to convert this Celsius to Kelvin. So when you are converting from Celsius to Kelvin, we don't add the 0.16. Always remember that. We just use 273. So 50 plus 273 gives you the temperature in Kelvin. Then you have the resistance at triple point of water. Now when you know that, we can easily get the resistance at this temperature. So you shall quote the formula, T is equal to RT over RTR, multiplied by 273.16. Then you shall substitute, substitute for T, and substitute for RTR. Then remain with this as the only unknown. So our aim is to make it the subject. What we shall do, we shall take this one this side to come up with this line. Then make RT the subject to give you that as the resistance they wanted. Then question 3 came from your NEB of November 1998, paper 1, question 6C, and it says, The resistance of a platinum thermometer is this, this, and this at boiling point of water, unknown temperature, and at freezing point. So this is for boiling point, unknown temperature, freezing point. Respectively, determine the unknown temperature on the thermodynamic scale. So we shall interpret the question. This is the at boiling point, this is at unknown temperature, and this is at freezing point. So for the Celsius scale, we shall first get the theta, quote the formula, substitute, and get the answer. So this is Celsius. We have to convert to Kelvin. So the, for, for the thermodynamic scale, we know that the unknown temperature will be 60 plus 273 to give you 333 Kelvin. So when you are converting from Celsius to Kelvin, you don't add the 0.16. That is not needed. So those were the calculations for resistance. You have seen the one for length or liquid in glass thermometer, resistance thermometer. Now we are going to gas thermometers. Now for gas thermometers, they involve two. There is constant volume gas thermometer where we use pressure and also constant pressure gas thermometer where we use volume. So you look at all both those ones in this part. So question one says the pressure of a gas at constant volume gas thermometer at Kelvin, so of, this is supposed to be of, of a constant volume gas thermometer at Kelvin temperature T is this. Okay. Calculate the temperature T if the pressure at triple point of water is this. So still we shall come and quote and interpret the question. This is pressure at unknown temperature. Then this is pressure at triple point of water. Therefore, we can get the temperature they want. So this will be PT over PTR times 
then you substitute for PT for PTR and maintain this. So simplify the whole of this using a calculator to give you this as the temperature they wanted. So this is supposed to be capital T, not theta. So you edit that. Then question two came from your name, 2020, paper one, question five, D Roman one, and it says, a constant volume thermometer was recorded to measure pressure when the atmospheric pressure was, to measure temperature when the atmospheric pressure was 760 millimeters of mercury. The following values were obtained. So we have bulb in ice, bulb in steam, and bulb at room temperature. And the length of the mercury in closed limb is maintained. Length of mercury in open limb is this. So length at ice point, length at steam point, and length at room temperature or unknown temperature. Calculate the room temperature. So we have atmospheric pressure and we have this in length and also this length of the liquid column. So we have to get the temperatures, so the pressure. So for pressure, we have get pressure at, at ice point, that is atmospheric pressure plus length of the mercury column. So H, capital H plus small h gives this. So this is the atmospheric pressure. Then the length of this will be the difference between the one at in, the length in closed limb and the length in, in open limb. So 130 minus 140 gives you plus this 760. So this minus this gives you negative 10. Now 760 minus 10 gives you 750. And that will be the pressure at ice point. What about at steam point? Still so capital H plus H. Capital H is that. Then the length will be, difference in length will be 330 minus 140. And in the end you come up with 950. What about pressure at unknown temperature? So still 750 plus the difference, which is 170 minus 140 to give you 790. So after getting all the pressures we need, we shall come and quote the formula, substitute, and get the answer. So substitute for P theta, P naught, P 100, P naught. Maintain the 100 to give you 20 degrees Celsius. Alternatively, instead of capturing the temperature, the pressures, you can use these heights. For example, H0 is this, then H100 is this, and H theta is that. So you can also use those H to come up with, to use H here, height of the material column, substitute for H theta, H0, H100, H0, and maintain this 100, you still come up with the same answer. So any of the two approaches is okay. Then question 3 came from your NEP, 2019, paper 1, question 7D, and it's Roman 3 and says, A thermometer is constructed with a liquid which expands according to relation this, Vt is equal to V0 in brackets that, where Vt is the volume at T degrees Celsius. V0 is the volume at 0 degrees Celsius on the scale of a gas thermometer, and alpha and beta are constants. Given that alpha is equal to 1000 beta, what will be the liquid what will the liquid thermometer read when the gas thermometer reads 50 degrees Celsius? So first we shall quote this expression given, then like we said, this is a Celsius temperature, so we need V0, V100, and V theta, or Vt. So V0 means, V100 means where there is T, you put 100, 100 here, 100 here, sorry. So this is, this T, you put 100 this t you put 100, this t you put 100. Then they gave us that alpha is 1000 beta, so where there is alpha you shall put 1000 beta. 
When I simplify the whole of this, I come up with this. Okay, what about V50? V50, where there is T, you put 50. Where there is T, you put 50. Where there is T, you put 50. Then you remember that alpha is a thousand beta. So where there is alpha, you put a thousand beta. Simplify the whole of this, you come up with this. Okay. So now we shall quote the formula V50 minus V0 over V100 minus V0 times 100. So substitute for V50 for V100. Then V0 is there, V0 is there, and 100 is there. Then we shall open brackets. When I open brackets for the numerator, I come up with this. Denominator, I come up with this. Then from there, I realize that this and this can cancel. Also, this can and this can cancel. So numerator remain with only this, and denominator remain with only that. So still here, I realize that this and this can cancel. You remain with this over this times 100 to give you this as the temperature they want. Then question 4 says a special type of thermometer of a fixed mass of an ideal gas has the following values of pressure and volume. So this ice point, pressure is that, volume is that. Steam point, pressure is that, volume is that. Unknown temperature, pressure is that, volume is that. Determine the unknown temperature theta measured on the thermometer. So previously we have been having when volume is constant and we use pressure and also when pressure is constant and we use volume. What about when both are not constant or when both are varying? What do you do? Here you need to remember that this is an ideal gas and for an ideal gas we have a formula that PV over T is equal to a constant. That means that when I take this to this side, I will come up with PV is proportional to temperature. So in this case, the thermometric property we use is P times V. Therefore, you come and say, unknown temperature, thermometric property at steam point, sorry, at ice point, at steam point, and at ice point. So you have quoted the formula, then you shall substitute P theta and P V theta, P naught, V naught, P a hundred, V a hundred, P naught, V naught, and maintain this a hundred. So simplify the whole of this, you come up with 68 degrees Celsius, and that is the answer they wanted. We have looked at resistance thermometer separately and gas thermometer separately. Now what if a question requires a combination of these two thermometers? How do you deal with the calculations? So that is what we are going to see in this part. So we we'll start with question 1 which came from UNEB 2007 paper 1 question 5D and it says the resistance R theta of a platinum wire varies with temperature theta degrees Celsius as measured by the constant volume gas thermometer according to the equation this not this word the resistance varies with this temperature but this temperature is measured by a constant volume gas thermometer that's what we meant by combination okay and it's given by this equation or expression here Roman 1 Calculate the temperature on the platinum wire scale corresponding to 60 degrees on the gas scale. So this 60 degrees is for the gas thermometer and the one the temperature of the on the platinum wire or platinum resistance thermometer. Then Roman 2 account for the difference between two values and state the temperature at which they agree. So you first quote the expression given, then you look for R0. R0 means where there is theta, you put 0. 
where there's theta input 0, theta input 0. So the whole of this cancels, you remain with 50, which is here. What about R100, where there is theta input 100? You come up with 70 ohms. What about R60? R60, where there is theta input 60? You come up with this. Therefore, you code the formula, substitute, and get the answer. So, now, instead of using R theta, we use R60, which is the temperature which was measured on the gas thermometer. I think you know the difference. Previously, previously we have been putting R theta here. But now we put the temperature which was measured on the other thermometer. Now, in this case, it was a gas thermometer. So, R60, R0, R100, R0 multiply by 100 to come up with this as the temperature on the platinum resistance thermometer. So what does that mean? It means that for a gas thermometer, it measures 60 degrees. But when you use a resistance thermometer, it will measure 56.4 degrees. Now, why are these two values different? Yet they are measuring the same unknown temperature. That is where Roman 2 comes in. So Roman 2 says, account for the difference between the two values and state the temperature at which they agree. So the difference between the two values is because a platinum resistance thermometer and a constant volume gas thermometer have different thermometric properties. So this is the key word. They have different thermometric properties. And these thermometric properties vary differently with temperature changes. So what we need to know is that different thermometric property vary differently with different with temperature changes. That gives the that make, gives the that accounts for the difference in the reading of the temperatures. But they also told us to state where the thermometers give the same readings or where they agree. So they agree at the fixed points. That, that is the ice point which is 0 degrees Celsius and steam point which is 100 degrees Celsius. So at 100 degrees Celsius all temperatures will give the same readings and at 0 degrees Celsius all temperatures will give the same reading. But in between these they'll give different readings, just like we have seen here. Resistance gives 56.4 and gas thermometer gives 60 degrees Celsius. The equation 2 says, a resistance R theta of a platinum resistance thermometer is given by this expression. Where alpha is this and beta, uh, sorry, where A is that, this A, and B is that. And R0 is the resistance at 0 degrees Celsius. Calculate the temperature of the thermometer when the temperature on the gas thermometer is 300 degrees Celsius. So in this case, the gas thermometer is reading 300 degrees Celsius. The question is, what will the resistance thermometer read? That is what we want to get. So still we shall come and code the expression, then get R theta when you have substituted for A and for B, then get R100, so where there is theta, we shall put there 100 here and 100 there. Simplify the whole of this, we will come up with this. Then we have R300, where there is theta, we put 300. Simplify the whole of this, you come up with this. Okay. Then next we shall call the formula. Here, like I said, we no longer put R theta, we put the temperature of the gas thermometer. So R300 is that, R0 is that, R100 is that, and R0 is that. Then the 100 is maintained. So when you subtract this minus this gives you this. And this minus this gives you that. Then from here, you realize that 
this and this can cancel you remain with this over this times 100 which gives you that as a temperature so this is what the resistance thermometer reads and the gas thermometer reads 300 then question 3 says that table below shows the values of resistance and pressure read from a platinum resistance thermometer and a gas thermometer respectively so at steam point ice point and at unknown temperature so these are the readings for so ice point resistance is here volume is there steam point resistance is here volume is there unknown temperature resistance is there volume is there then they said determine the value of theta on the resistance thermometer and constant volume gas thermometer and account for the difference in the value of theta so for platinum we use r for for volume we use v but the formulas remain the same so shall come here and say that for a platinum resistance thermometer r naught is that r 100 is that r theta is that therefore quote the formula substitute and get the answer what about for volume constant volume pressure P0 is that, P100 is that, and P theta is that. Therefore, call the formula, substitute, and get the answer. So there are two readings, reading on the resistance thermometer, reading on the gas thermometer. Then they told you to account for the difference. So the difference in the value of theta for platinum resistance thermometer and constant volume gas thermometer is because they have different thermometric properties which vary differently with temperature changes. So the same reason we gave in the question one is the same reason we shall give here. Question four says the resistance of a certain platinum resistance thermometer is found to be this at zero degrees Celsius, this at 100 degrees Celsius, and this at 444.5 degrees Celsius. The boiling point of sulfur on a gas scale so this is the boiling point of sulfur on a gas scale. Okay, Roman 1, calculate the boiling point of sulfur on the platinum resistance thermometer. So if a gas thermometer reads this, what will a platinum resistance thermometer read? That's what they want in Roman 1. Then Roman 2, the thermometer is immersed in a given liquid and its resistance is observed to be this determine the temperature of the liquid on the platinum resistance thermometer so let's start with roman one so for roman one r naught is there r a hundred and r 444.5 therefore you come here we put the temperature on the gas thermometer this is what they've given us so R444, substitute, 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 substitute. So in the end, the whole of this will give you 42 degrees Celsius. Then Roman 2, the thermometer is immersed in a given liquid and its resistance is observed to be this. Determine the temperature of the liquid on the resistance thermometer. So R0 is that, R100 is that, R0 is that. So we shall code the formula, substitute, and get the answer. And that's what they wanted. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. And bear in mind the next video will be on calorimetry and in particular specific heat capacity. So if you are not yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive the updates when the next video has been uploaded. And also, if you know any student who is not yet on this platform, please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like Facebook and WhatsApp so that we can all benefit as a family.